Hey, have you seen this cute little guy before? Do you know what he is? Well, he's China's latest fad since the summer of 2022, and I'm here to tell you all about it. So what animal do you think this is? Could he be the Loch Ness Monster? Or Puff the Magic Dragon? Or maybe a dinosaur? That was my best guess. And what about this little bird that was under one of its feet? Kind of looks like an angry bird's bird. Well, here's a really big hint. He lives here in the Gansu Provincial Museum, where there's this horse statue outside in the front of the entrance. A green horse? Yes, because the most important artifact in the Gansu Provincial Museum is this flying horse. And I would like to tell you a bit about its history and why it's so important to the Chinese people. The Gansu Provincial Museum is a very important museum in Western China. And that is because of the Silk Road and the importance of Gansu along this the Silk Road. So many of the artifacts are based on the Silk Road, including this flying horse. This horse is made of bronze, and there was a time in China's history where bronze was a very prevalent material used for making things. And so this bronze horse is estimated to be around 2,000 years old. It's uh, not doesn't look that big, but it's actually seven kilograms in weight, so it's quite heavy. And yet, as you see, um, it's uh, most of its legs are are up in the air, and there's only one leg uh, that's touching the bottom, uh, standing on a bird, um, and it's able to perfectly balance um, just on this little bird that's under one of its hooves. Um, this horse is a mix of different breeds, but it's primarily based on the horse breed called Fergana. So the Fergana breed is not a Chinese breed. It was imported um, from the West along what is what was then um, be, what then became this uh, part of the Silk Road. The Fergana Valley. Uh, was an interesting place of history as well as um, they were um, said to be partially Greek descendants. This horse was brought into China uh, because of its strength and vigor. It was a very strong horse, powerful horse, and at that time in China's history during the Han Dynasty, um, they were uh, they had a lot of conflict with the Huns who are trying to invade uh, from north of China. And so I remember watching the movie called Mulan. And in that movie, you will see, you know, that the the Huns were, <laughs> were a lot bigger and stronger than the uh, Chinese soldiers. Um, and so um, they needed to find a way to compete against the Huns their soldiers and also their horse. And so this was a solution that they found um, as they discovered this horse breed from west of China and brought it in and um, developed them um, to fight against the Huns. So in the past, this uh, artifact was incorrectly named as the galloping horse treading on a sparrow. 
and that is because um, the bird is indeed not a sparrow. I gave, I'm giving you a close-up of the artifact so that you can see the bird more, more closely. You can see, uh, first of all, that the neck is turned and its uh, face is actually facing the hoof that is standing on its back as if it's looking to see what, what is on its back. Uh, but even more importantly, you'll notice the tail. So usually a sparrow has uh, a pointed tail, like two points um, at the end of the tail. Uh, and this one is indeed flat, and so that is why experts now say that it is indeed not a sparrow. However, the bird is still, which type of species of bird it is, is still in question. And that is because the um, there is debate still over the exact time period where this artifact is from. So Han Dynasty is divided into two time periods, East and West. So west came first and then east. So if you, if you believe that this horse comes from um, the first time period called West Han Dynasty, then you will believe that um, it is an eagle. And that is because, uh, like I said before, they were fighting against the Huns. And so um, the Huns, their, their symbol or the, the bird that um, they represented them was the eagle. And so this is symbolic, uh, this figure, this uh, figure of the horse standing on the back of a eagle um, is symbolic of China being victorious over them. And this horse artifact was actually a collection of horses and chariots and men all made of bronze um, that were found in a tomb, um, they believe, of a general. And so it could have been um, that this general was victorious against uh, his battles against the Huns. And so when he died, he had all these things created for him, and especially this one um, to mark to remember um, his victory against the Huns. However, um, there's also pe there are also people who believe that um, this horse comes from a different from the latter time period called called the East Han Dynasty. Um, and if you, you believe um, that estimation, then you would say that the bird is a raven. And that is because there, were, there was a manuscript that was found from this time period um, describing this horse, uh, this breed of horse, as able to, um, to fly faster than ravens. And so that's why... Um, Usually the name of the bird is now left out of the name of this artifact. So this is the rest of the collection of the horses and chariots and men that were all found together um, in this tomb that was actually found underneath a monastery. And, uh, and they guessed to be the, the burial tomb of a famous general. And it's interesting to me because it reminds me of the terracotta warriors, which you have probably heard about. The terracotta uh, soldiers and, you know, all the horses and things were much, much larger, but they were made of clay, like terracotta clay. Um, these ones are all made of bronze. And so, I mean, it's it's smaller because it's made of bronze. Uh, but the terracotta warriors uh, were buried, uh, were the, uh, buried with uh, for the uh, Qin Shi Huang Emperor Qin. And uh, it, I think it's because, um, it, you know, back then what they thought is you can create these statues of things um, that are precious to you and they can be brought with you uh, to heaven when you die. So, so, you know, an emperor or a general who passes away, you know, he would want to have an army even in the afterlife. And so that's why he creates um, this army and to be buried in, in the tomb with him. So I thought that's kind of cool to be able to discover something like the, the terracotta warriors, but made of bronze. So this was the description that was beside the artifact at the museum. And I'm going to share with you a uh, the translation of this.
So this translation talks about the, you know, like what's unique about uh, the design of this horse. Uh, it says that it's actually this artifact is a mix of uh, features from different horse breeds, including the local Hushi horse, um, but as well the Daiwan horse, which is the Fergana foreign horse, as well features from the Mongolian and other horse breeds. So it's a the 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 artifact itself is a mix of the different breeds of horses. But um, other research that I've read, it, the main the main uh, features of the horse um, reflect the the foreign Forgana horse. Uh, I love what it shares in the end that the bronze galloping horse has become an envoy and symbol of cultural exchange between the East and the West, and is therefore listed as a symbol of Chinese tourism. So it's it's a way this this artifact. Um, reflects the Chinese value of welcoming other people to China as well as China being open to learning from other cultures as well. The museum also had this nice map uh, just showing the Silk Road as not just a single road but a network of roads that was developed uh, over a, lo a lo long length of time and different times, uh, different trade routes were, were developed. So I just wanted to mention that. So like I mentioned before, uh, this flying horse of Gansu has now since a few decades ago become the symbol for China's tourism, welcoming foreigners to China, but also China being open to the world. So the Flying Horse of Gansu is a very important artifact in China. So important, in fact, that uh, every primary student, every student in China uh, learns about this horse. Uh, this is an excerpt from uh, one of their primary school, uh, school language arts lessons about the Flying Horse. So um, every Every child in primary school, public school in China, they use the same textbook and they all learn about this horse in, in primary or elementary school, um, as well as middle school. And even at some, at least for some amount of time, um, it was also in the university entrance exam. Uh, so students had to write about it um, in the exam that, uh, to get into university. So this is one of the videos that became viral um, soon after this green plush toy was put on the market online. So uh, people recognized it as what it was, that they knew what, what it was, unlike myself. Um, and then um, soon after, many people started buying it, uh, thousands within within uh, within a day within a day or two and then hundreds of thousands and some people even bought truckloads of these toys as well the marketing department of the Gansu Provincial Museum is made up of 40 young uh, marketing uh, staff and I think that they uh, were very successful in finding a way to draw in the young people to get them excited about Chinese artifacts and get them excited about visiting museums. Another reason why this became so popular last summer when it came out was because it was in the midst of the pandemic, the COVID pandemic. And during this time, everyone had to scan these codes in public settings like whenever you go to a store or go to any public location you had to scan this code and um, prove that uh, you've basically been tested recently like within 24 or 48 hours and uh, and that uh, you are you are not in any location where anyone had tested positive recently and so this code um, was called the green code so green code is lui ma in Chinese, and green horse is also lui ma. 
So they sound exactly the same, even though the character for horse and code are different. Uh, but the word code um, also includes the word horse. And so that's why uh, people put the two things together, green horse and green code. And given the current situation at the time, it was a way to uh, kind of uh, make fun of the current situation that people were facing. When I first visited the museum, I had no idea what these toys were. I thought they were dinosaurs, most likely, but I wasn't even sure. It wasn't until weeks later that I, uh, when I was doing research about the flying horse of Gansu, that I happened upon these uh, pictures and videos of uh, these uh, plush toys as well and put the two together. And so I went back to the store and purchased one of these uh, green plush toys. So this is the the store, the gift shop, with all the different things you can buy. I believe this is a later model. Um, I was told by this one of the staff when I visited today that um, there are only 20 of these uh, specific ones with the legs crossed are um, produced or put on the shelves at the museum uh, once a month. So only 20 of these are available. So they are very limited qu uh, quantities, but the other ones um, are the more common ones. So we decided to go with this one. I also didn't notice uh, these masks that you can buy the first time we went, so I'm not sure if that was there at that time, or maybe I didn't notice, but this is my son wearing one of the masks and holding the plush toy that we're about to purchase. And if you want a smaller thing, you can also buy a keychain or even this little cute little pin. So there's many different things of the flying horse that was being sold at the, the um, store, including this pin and mugs, t-shirts, tote bags, slippers, you name it. I hope you enjoyed the video today and learned some interesting things about China and Chinese culture. If you are interested to learn about myself and my family's experience of being expats and recently of moving to China, I welcome you to visit our blog, farwide.blog. Thanks for watching.